Last week, we ended with piecewise functions, just a quick example, and we're going to um, finish off with a couple more examples of piecewise function for that 3.4 section, and then we'll get into transformations of graphs. So using those um, the graphs that we had done, there's probably about six or seven of them that you had to be familiar with and what the shape looked like. Um, so let's look at a piecewise function. And so piecewise functions have multiple equations in there, and each equation is special in the fact that you are only using particular y values, not, sorry, not y values, you're only using particular x values for that equation. And so let's say you had the equation 3x plus 5. And this is only if negative 3 is less than or equal to x is less than 0. And then we have the equation 5. And this is if x is between 0 and including 0 and 2 and including 2. And then the last equation is x squared plus 1. And this is if x is greater than 2. Okay, so depending on what value you were choosing for f of x depends on what equation you use. So let's just kind of look at a couple of things. For example, if it said find f of negative one. Oops. I'm looking at colors just because I have different ones. Let's just say negative one. So we need to see which interval does negative one fall into. Is negative one in between negative three and zero? Yeah, it is. And so I can just say, okay, well, this is the equation that I need to use. So we have to use equation one. Because it falls between. So doing that, we're just going to go back into this equation. Wherever we see an x, we're going to plug in negative one. And then order of operations, three times negative one is negative three plus five. So this gives us two. If it told us to find f of zero, then you need to look at which equation zero falls into. Is it between negative three and zero? This says it's not including zero, so no. And the second equation says it is including zero, so we have to use equation two. Well, there's no x in equation two. And so when we, basically, there's no place to plug in the zero. So all we get back is this five. See, these are different points on our graph. So same sort of idea when we plug in, if it asked us to find f of two. Two is one of the values that is on the end of our inequality. You wanna use it with the one that it's equal to. And so again, this would be saying to use equation two, which is five. If in this case it says find f of negative 10. Well, negative 10 is not in any of these inequalities, doesn't satisfy. And so this one, this does not exist. Negative 10 is not in the domain. And 
Okay, so you should be able to answer questions about that piecewise function, but most importantly, you should be able to graph that. Um, and so usually when I'm graphing it, I'll graph each piece and just make sure that I'm um, cognitive of what is the end value of my inequality. The other thing is, even if that end value of your inequality is not um, included, you always want to see what that point would be. And that is where you're going to end that value of that piece of the graph. And if it's not in, um, included, then you're going to put an open circle. And if it's included at the end, um, part of that graph, you're going to put a closed circle. Okay. So the first piece was 3x plus 5, and I know I start when x is negative 3, and so all I'm doing is plugging in negative 3 wherever I see an x. So if I do f of negative 3, I have negative 3 times 3 is negative 9, negative 9 plus 5 is negative 4. So I know I have a point at negative 3, negative 4. And this is included. And so I'm just going to give myself a note that was a closed circle, especially if I didn't graph it then. And so now choose a value in between negative 3 and 0. I know this is a line, so how about 0, actually? And I'm just going to do 0, um, even though it's not included. 3 times 0 is 0, plus 5 is 5. So at x equals 0, our y value is 5. But we're going to put an open circle. Again, this is a line because it's what it's a linear y equals 3x plus 5. And then graph equation 2. So equation 2 is all our y values are 5. It doesn't matter what value you plug in for x as long as it's in that domain. So when x is 0, y is 5. And then let's just look at the other value 2. It's also 5. And these are closed. And I know an equation, or y equals a number, is just a horizontal line. So even though that this was an open circle because of the first graph, because the point is included for the second equation, we're going to close it. And then x squared plus 1 for any value greater than 2. We, will, we want to see what's happening at 2. So at 2, if I plug it in here, we get 2 squared. 2 squared plus 1 is 5. And this is open. I'll just do one more point. I know that this is a quadratic. And it was y equals x squared plus 1. So if I plug in 3 here, 3 squared is 9, 9 plus 1 is 10. Okay, so when I will go to plot this, well, at x equals 3, I have an open circle, but this was already closed, so it remains closed because of that second equation. And then x equals, so that was actually 2. And then x equals 3, I have 10. It's a parabola shape. OK, this on the right-hand side, I put an arrow because x's can go to infinity. But notice on the left-hand side, I close this. There's no arrow because x had a stop when it was negative 3. And so now we have the graph. So I'll ask you, or I could ask you different questions following up on this, like what's the domain? Well, we're basically given the domain for the in a um, quality notation. So we're hitting everything between and including negative 3 to 0. 
but we can include zero here, include two, all the way. So basically I'm starting at negative three and I'm going to infinity. Or another way to state that depending on what, how they stated that they wanted it, x is greater than or equal to negative three. What is the range? So the range are the y values that you're hitting on the graph. We'll notice that there's no y value here that is smaller than this negative four. So the smallest y value is negative four and we include it. And then we're gonna come up, we're hitting all the values between y equals negative four and five. We stay at five for a while, and then we hit all the values from five to infinity. So I'm getting all the y values that are greater than or equal to negative four to infinity. Or another way to state this, in this case, this is our y values, our output. Y is greater than or equal to negative four. So you should be able to tell what intervals the graph is increasing, decreasing, and constant. So always looking at it and reading the graph left to right. Is it going uphill left to right? If so, that's where it's increasing. And so notice that we're increasing from x equals negative three. And then we're walking, we're walking all the way up. And then we stop walking up when we hit x equals zero. So it's increasing piece is from negative three to zero. But I notice after we walk it on a flat surface for a while, then we're gonna be climbing pretty steeply, but we will be climbing. And so we're increasing starting at three and going to infinity. decreasing is never going down here left to right on that graph so never and then constant that's where the graph is horizontal and so the graph is horizontal and you're always again using the x values so it's starting at zero and we're stopping at three so from three, I'm sorry, zero to three, smallest to largest. Or if I wanted to put this in inequality notation, zero is less than x is less than three. Okay, so. Any questions on that one? Oh, I was wondering, how did you get the range again? The range has to do with what y values you hit. And so I always look at my graph and I always look at the smallest y value. And my graph is coming upwards always, then it's gonna be all um, negative values. But because the smallest y value on this graph is at negative four, um, that is where we're going to start and we're including it because that was a solid um, circle and then we're oops, we're hitting all the y values going upwards because of this piece in here this green graph is going to go up forever and so all the y values on the graph are from negative four to infinity thank you very much yeah any other questions You guys want to see one more or you think you're good? So I noticed that a lot of you already got that homework finished. So I don't want to say and do this too much if, if you guys are good. Oh, here's one that I didn't talk about. So let me just do it because this is also something that is is useful and you might see it 
and mathematics later on. And so this is called the greatest integer function. Oops. Okay, so what this is, is the set of all real numbers. Let me just read it. Um, where It's um, the greatest integer less than or equal to x. So it's written f of x is equal to, they write it in your book as i n t x, but I've seen it differently than this before. This is the first time I've seen it like this. And this again is equal to the greatest integer less than x. Less than or equal to x. Another way that you might see it in different books or online is kind of like it's a double-ish kind of looking bracket. So if you see it like that, that's also meaning the same thing. Okay, so sometimes part of um, a definition is knowing that what the <laughs> terminology is saying in here. So first of all, you need to know what an integer is. So remember, integers are real numbers, and they're coming from negative infinity, um, dot, 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 negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and going up to infinity. So that is what that looks like. And these dot, dot, dots here are meaning that it's continuing in this pa pattern each way. Well, x can be any number. Look at our integers. So just to be kind of aware of it, there's a symbol that we use for integers in math. It kind of looks like a z, like this. I think I don't think the bar's underneath. So it's kind of a funky z. So this is equal to the greatest integer, less than or equal to x. So that's our output. Our output is an integer. Our input, though, can be any number. And so if I chose a number, let's say 0 0.5. Well, if I look at the integer 0, 1, 2, and I plug in 0 0.5 in here, that's not an integer. And so the rule says take the greatest integer less than this. And so the integer right next to it less than this is zero. And so in this case, we would get back zero. If I plugged in f of one, well, one is an integer. And so by this rule, it's equal to itself one. If I plugged in anything in between one and two, but not including two, so let's say I plugged in 1.9. Well, 1.9 is not an integer. It would be right in here. And so we look at the number that to the left of it, the greatest integer to the left of it, which would be one. So if I start graphing this, um, let's see. So at one, I had one, it was solid. At 1.9, I have one. Anything in between these values, I would still have one. But when I get up to two, it is no longer one there. So I'm gonna put an open circle here at two, one, to show that that's not included. 
but f of two, that is an integer. Since it is an integer, it's equal to itself too. And so I'm gonna put a closed circle, any number between two and three, but not including three, the integer to the left of it would be two. And so it's gonna be a um, horizontal line there. Once I get to three, it's gonna be an open circle because at three, three is an integer, so it's gonna equal itself three. Anything in between three and four, not including four, is gonna be included. It's gonna give us the back, the y value of three. So this is also called the step function. See how we kind of step up. Um, back down here, we said anything between zero and one would give us back zero. Open circle though at one, zero closed circle at zero, zero. Negatives, you just gotta be a little bit more um, careful. So if I chose a number negative 0.5, negative 0.5, the integer to the left of it is negative one. Um, so negative one is down in here. Okay, so negative 0.5, that gives me negative one anything in between here. Negative one gives me negative one. So again, it's a step function. Uh, I think I might be a little lost. Okay. Um, where did you get all these? <laughs> might, this might sound like a stupid question. Um, where did you get all these numbers from? <laughs> okay. Um, the, the, the example or what we were doing was we were graphing the greatest integer function. And before we went and even started to plug in points into this equation, um, we, I wanted to go over what is an integer so that when we go to figure it out, we knew what the, what the value would be. And so when you're graphing something, you just need to start plug, plugging in points, right? And you can make your table or we can make it this is another way of saying, this is here, you're plugging in x equals 0 0.5, and this is our output, so 0 0.5. But according to the directions, when we're looking at this, you have to look at the greatest integer. So x in our case was 0 0.5. I just chose the greatest integer less than or equal to x. Well, 0 0.5 is not an integer, it's not in this list. And so if you look at where 0 0.5 falls, what between what two numbers, that would be in between these two numbers, right? And so the integer that is the greatest integer, less than this. Well, zero is the greatest integer less than this. Uh, negative one is an integer less than this, but it's not the greatest one that is less than one. And so that's why you're getting these horizontal lines because anything that's not an integer, which would be everything in between these numbers, right, would be falling. So in this case, if I plugged in 2.2, .2, that's not an integer, but the one that's the integer that's the greatest would be two. I think I get it now. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes, yeah, so sometimes it's hard because you know you're you're trying to write things down um, and keep up and trying to process things at the same time. So thank you. Ask questions and clarify. Okay, so I'm gonna jump into the next chapter, which is gonna be um, graphing um, using transformations of functions. And just to keep the videos kind of sh on the shorter side, I'm going to stop this video and restart it with a new, so it will, it will come up with a new video for the next piece.